All right, Deep, interesting start to the markets, uh, but let's uh, get in our guest. I understand that Amit Nigam is joining us. He's the head of equities, uh, Peerless uh, MF. Thank you very much for coming into the show. Your first take really on, on the story that we're putting right on top, which is the CRR rate cut and the impact you foresee on, on banking at this stage. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Uh, so definitely this was a surprise move, uh, but uh, this I think came, to a sub came as a surprise to those investors who were banking on this short-term profitability blip uh, for the banks. The way we, uh, at PLS we analyze banks is more on the longer term, uh, is that how they uh, do business. And the core business for a bank is how do they uh, get the deposits and how do they lend it out to uh, people who need the credit. Now because of the uh, demonetization move there's a huge amount of surplus which has come and uh, landed up in the banks. Uh, ideally this money should have been uh, uh, kept in a cash reserve kind of a uh, place because this kind of money cannot be used overnight by banks. Uh, now this uh, move from RBI definitely is kind of authorizing or affirming that this money is to sit with CRR and therefore the banks do not earn anything on that compared to a scenario where this money could have been deployed in uh, bonds and we had seen a substantial rally in the bond markets, the 10 years especially. Uh, so that is something which will not happen. So compared to a scenario last week when people were building in their numbers for the short term at least a surprise profitability to happen for these banks that will not happen. Uh, so therefore, uh, when you, we come back to our uh, long-term view of banks, we are constructive on this industry uh, because we are going to see a huge formalization of our Indian economy. The amount of money which will flow through the credit markets will be much larger uh, and that will give you the credit growth. So an industry which is growing, profitability should not be hurt too much in the long term. And therefore, we, we like the banks, which will, uh, which if they correct, we will be more than happy to buy them at our comfortable valuation levels. Amit, just uh, hold that thought because I want to talk to you about uh, banks a bit more in detail. But I have uh, Piyush with me in the studios. Really to uh, just put in perspective some of these changes that the RBI has made as also what some of the brokerages are making of that. But uh, Piyush, just uh, help us understand, especially those of us who are not very comfortable with the banking terminology, what exactly is CRR meant for? And this 15-day uh, uh, window that is uh, hiked and will be reviewed again on 9th of December, what does this mean for banks as far as their functional uh, operations go? Well, CRR is like a purely, uh, you can say, a safety measure where banks are being asked to park in some funds where they don't get any interest rate on that. So usually, if you're parking some funds in terms of uh, repo, uh, you would be actually getting a basic interest rate from the RBI. But CRR is like zero interest funds. Now, in this context, like uh, it's a, in a very short time frame, uh, basically, the RBI actually has received, the banks have received huge amount of deposits. Now, actually, uh, the number is clocking above 8 lakh crore. So this means that uh, even RBI actually has a limitation of uh, bond portfolio. So the amount of bond issuances the RBI actually was able to offer to the banks at present was limited. And because of that, actually, um, RBI actually wanted to basically suck out some liquidity. So for banks actually, and just imagine if uh, there is a stock and a lot of demand is actually going after the single stock, usually the stock price starts um, basically moving up very sharply. And this is what was happening with the bond price. The bond leads actually, they started falling sharply because all the banks actually, they were gunning for the uh, bonds, the same sort of uh, 10-year bonds, uh, two-year bonds. And because of that, the yield started falling very rapidly. And this was discomforting for RBI because let's remember, there is a question of risk management also here because once uh, there is a global risk, if actually yields, uh, they start actually retracing back, that would be actually creating some sort of losses for the banks also. So I think for now, for actually uh, RBI has taken a measure, which is a combination of risk management and also buying time so that RBI can issue fresh bonds to the banks. And then actually banks can use that actually for purchasing and basically, uh, again, the liquidity will come out of the system. And let's remember the, the deposits have not stopped. Uh, so actually, uh, there is still some time to 30 December, deposits will keep on coming, this number is going to go up. So RBI definitely needs uh, to issue a lot of bonds, so that actually that banks can actually go out and park funds there. Uh, number two, why only bonds? Uh, why basically uh, not actually go out and give out loan? Because the credit environment is subdued. Uh, there is hardly any credit growth at present. Uh, even we are checking the stats and the brokerage are reporting like less than 1 lakh crore credit growth over the last basically uh, one or two months. 
that indicates that because the demand is not strong on the credit side, the banks have to come back to the bond market because the cost of fund is a question there and to actually justify the cost of funds, they had to actually have to park funds in the bonds. And so this is a mismatch, Deep, that's what we were talking about. Because there is not enough bond insurances at present with the RBI, so RBI needed time uh, to actually allow the bond issuances to go back to banks and so that they can park in the funds. And so for that time, for RBI's own actually interest, RBI has asked the banks to uh, park in funds, so the RBI does not actually have to pay interest on the same funds which the banks are parking in. Huge amount of money within a very short span of time would have been detrimental for RBI. So that's why actually RBI has taken this measure. Right. Uh, Amit, let me come to you with this, uh, really. Do you think the whole uh, banking system, in fact, is in a flux right now and over the next 12 to 18 months or let's say two-year time horizon, you could see a radical change as far as the uh, operations of banks go? And why I'm asking this is because the RBI has allowed bank licenses on tap. You have small and uh, payment banks coming up. You have a, a mobile banking such as MobiQuick and Paytm as also UPI which will become a reality soon. So the traditional banking system model, is that ready to undergo a huge change? And really in lieu of that, how prepared are some of these existing banks to take on that opportunity? And could we see a flow out of this banking uh, system as uh, banks adjust to this new reality? Okay, so let me just try and answer this question uh, and give you a perspective also on this CRR. See, the money which has come to the banks uh, today is not because of the free choice of, let's say, the depositors or because the banks were offering a very uh, high interest rate which forced these investors to come and deposit their money. It's a move which has happened because of a government policy. Now this money ideally if it was available with the banks in terms of the 500 rupee currency notes or the 2000 rupee currency notes could have been withdrawn uh, at the rate of 24,000 per week per uh, depositor. Uh, but because there is a mismatch in the terms of supply of uh, rupee, the old 500 and 1000 rupee notes and the demand for them. So what has happened that there is a, this liquidity which is lying with the banks. Now as and when the new currency notes are made available, this uh, liquidity which is sitting with the banks will gradually flow out. Now comes the question uh, as to what will happen with this industry in the next 12 to 18 months. Now if you see the banks uh, which are existing today are no longer the banks that we would remember let's say 10 years ago or 5 years ago. They have evolved a lot. Some of the banks for example today have offered almost all the products available let's say uh, a, a, a Paytm kind of an offering or uh, a mobile uh, bank to bank transfer. So some of the banks have already done that and uh, at the end of the day all these uh, uh, apps or let's say uh, methods to transfer money without coming to a bank still need a network at the back end which happens to be the banking system today. Uh, with time, uh, the, num the competition will definitely go up. As you said, RBI today has uh, bank licenses on tap. They have already given out so many licenses in the last two years which has not happened over several decades. So the competition will go up. But the way the banking is done will evolve, will change. And the banks which will be able to change with time and accommodate these changes in technology are the ones which, we will, which will survive. And that's what we keep doing. So as I said in my first earlier question was that we keep evolving, we keep evaluating the banks and their business model over longer periods of time and the way these banks change and sustain uh, which will uh, qualify as possible investment opportunities for us. And if because of such moves these banks are available to us at valuations which are much better than they were let's say uh, uh, two months ago, we'll be more than happy to increase our allocation to these uh, banks. Amit, what's your, uh, uh, how, what, what are you thinking when it comes to, say, the investors that were uh, very bullish on the consumption story? Because that was uh, the way we were headed, uh, especially after the monsoon, and, and there was a lot being said about the pickup that's going to take place. Now, given what we've seen with the impact of demonetize, demonetization, how are, say, investors who were, who were really banking on consumption as a story, you know, how, what is the sentiment there and how are they sort of hedging themselves uh, against uh, uh, more devaluation, so to speak? Sure. So uh, let me uh, uh, share uh, our thoughts on this space because 
uh, this is a space which is very close to our investment uh, philosophy and our process uh, the way we uh, evaluate businesses is we see at the at the end the demand level how is it panning out so because of this demonetization move what has happened the money which has got sucked out from the consumers definitely creates a disruption in the consumption pattern now when i look at the consumption pattern of a, a consumer there are typically two big sub big sets one is the uh, small ticket more regular frequent uh, consumption uh, behavior for example it can be my grocery it can be my utility bill it can be my school bill and then there is a certain uh, element of large ticket uh, consumption which can be uh, let's say purchase of the next big tv or the next refrigerator and when i look at these two sets they can further be divided into two subsets which can be uh, one is the discretionary bit and the other is where so uh, where it's more well planned and the other is impulse so suppose i am walking in a mall and i see a uh, new wireless uh, uh, headphones now this is something which should be categorized as a uh, impulse Uh, large ticket purchase which i can obviously put it off by some time because i don't have the currency in my pocket now the the purchases which are larger ticket less frequency are the ones where we will see some postponement now uh, the larger the ticket size the longer the uh, uh, delay in the decision making is what we expect so for example we may see a 3 to 6 months kind of a delay for the large ticket uh, purchase items but for something which is very small impulse item then the hit probably would uh, will probably peter out within few weeks as more and more currency gets rolled out in fact some of the surveys that people have conducted with uh, the distribution channel or with consumption related companies what they have found that within the first week the drop was as high as maybe 75 to 80% but over the next 2 to 3 weeks and we are now in the third week after that move we are seeing the drop to be reduced to only about 15 to 20% and companies on the other hand have been innovative in ex- in uh, actually letting the credit periods be on a more relaxed terms so there are companies which are saying you can buy goods today and pay maybe 2 months later uh, some of the fmcg companies are allowing their distributors to have a 15 day credit period than probably earlier a 2 day or a 3 day so these are the, some of the measures which are happening from the industry side and the consumer behavior which is evolving and which is uh which is uh, coming to say that this effect will have a short term blip uh, maybe maximum up to 2 to 3 months and then uh, over the next two quarters we should come back on our trajectory so short term uh, pain for 2 to 3 months and should be back on trajectory maybe by the end of uh, q4 amit nigam head of equities at plsms mf uh, thank you for joining us on uh, lunch money today appreciate your perspective on the markets uh, piyush uh, before i take that break you had a very interesting take on